he feels like his sideboarded games are quite good against Mono Red, mm -hmm. so I think he feels pretty good about the matchup. This one, what I like Paulo has going for him is that he has less copies of elements that are very good against hyper-aggressive decks and more interaction. So more counter spells in the main deck, less copies of Shatter the Sky and the mm -hmm. Birth of Validus, just more cards that are going to help him interact favorably against Nasif in this matchup. So PBDDR keeps his hand. He's got Temple of Enlightenment and the Field of Rune, so he can scry to hopefully find his third land. Birth of Miletus, also another very important card, actually, in this, uh, in this archetype. Able to find the land, just shore up the draws, create a blocker, and also gain some life, which could prove important in certain matchups. So. Yeah, in, in this particular matchup, it's going to be about chapter one on Birth yeah. of Miletus, just finding the planes. Now, ideally, Paul would like to find the second source of blue mana mm -hmm. to be able to cast Absorb, but ultimately, he's got at least three lands rolled up in this hand, starting off with Temple of Enlightenment into Field of Ruin, plus Birth of Miletus finding a planes. If he wants to go to Omen of the Sea instead of Birth of Miletus, he has that option available to him, so I don't foresee land drops to be an issue for Paulo this game. Yeah, certainly not with this deck. It's very good at drawing cards, finding lands, that sort of thing. So, a pretty safe keep here. Let's get things underway. Temple of Epiphany is going to scry for Gabna Seif. He's going to send that to the bottom. And Dream Trawler, this is... Hello. So, one of fun of Mr. Dream Trawler, a card that has a potential to end games outright. So that's a card that Paulo can play towards this game. Yep. Um, obviously, it's going to be coming much later down the oh, road. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Paulo, you know, speaking with him again, one of the things, that, given the construction of his deck with only the one Dream Trawler, as opposed to players generally playing three or four copies, is that Paulo's trying to beat you in the submission. Yeah. So he's going to try to counter all of your spells, generate a huge overwhelming advantage of cards, and then he'll kill you at his leisure. Yeah. So Dream Trawler, it could work itself into the equation in this game, but I don't expect to see it until very far from now. Yeah. So both players just kind of, you know, playing this fun, all right, what you got at instant speed. Omen of the Sea is going to get fired off here for Paolo. He's going to scry and then draw a card. It was very important for Paolo to draw that copy of Hollowed Fountain last turn because that took care of oh, yeah. his third land drop. More importantly, it also gave him the second blue mana for Absorb. What I will mention is that Paolo did a really nice job in there of not tapping out on his main phase for the birth of Miletus because had Nassif played Teferi, and then all of a sudden the game gets a lot more difficult. Oh, yeah. Paulo's kind of got that covered with the copy of Mystical Dispute in his hand. Now, how important is Teferi in this matchup? Like, we, we, it's very, very we've good seen on the side. Like, Team Reclamation, how it just shuts down the game plan pretty much. On the Sea side, it just opens up the ability for him to play all of his spells and not have to worry about counter magic. On Paulo's side, it's fine, but mm -hmm. it's not spectacular. One thing it does do a nice job of is make it so that Nasif has to play a card like Brazen Borrower on his main phase as opposed to on Paulo's end step. Ooh, so nice. Shadow of the Sky is the draw for PBDDR, so if the creatures do get out of hand, he's got some way to just mitigate that a little bit. I do notice that uh, Nasif doesn't have any white mana just yet, but as I say it, Hallowed Fountain off the top of the library, so Kenrith can come into play eventually. So this is one of those games uh, for Nasif's side of things with Jeskai Fires where he's just kind of playing a normal game. He's got yeah. a Brazen Borrower on the battlefield. He's got another one in hand. He's got the ability to play Kenrith two turns from now because he drew that white source that you mm -hmm. did mention. So Fires of Invention, it, this deck's namesake card hasn't shown up yet, yeah. but he's still playing Magic totally fine. But the problem with this, if you are Nasif, is that you're not doing anything overwhelmingly powerful, and this is always control deck can fight back against that pretty easily. Yeah. So nothing much to do here besides crack the Omen of the Sea. Let's take a look at the top of the library. Do some scrying. He's got a pretty good looking hand here. He's got interaction. He's got ways to find extra land if he needs to. And he's got board clears if things do get out of hand. Elspeth Conquers Death, another very key card that's uh, you know been introduced since Theros. Beyond Death's release. Yeah, Elspeth Conquers deck is one of is one of the best sagas of all time. One oh, could yeah. argue the best saga ever printed. History of Benali would of course like to join mm -hmm. in on that conversation. But it is a nice card in this matchup. What I will say though is I don't think it's ideal right now. So yeah. it looks like Paul is going to scribe both of these cards to the bottom. Remember, he's sacrificing Omen of the Sea right now, not actually casting it. So it's scry two, not draw a card, and oh, then nice. he'll draw for his turn. Cool. So finding some more counter magic, so we can get into that battle when needs be. Field of Ruin is going to be the land for turn. Yeah, I'm curious if Paulo wants to play a spell this turn or not yeah. because he can deploy Teferi or he can very simply leave his leave his four lands up to be able to represent Absorb mm -hmm. and mystical and, and or Mystical Dispute. Looks but like it looks like he's going to go yeah. to Teferi. Looks like he wants to get Teferi down. I imagine he'll just plus it. Well, actually, like oh, I actually like I like this play here from Nasif because this okay. is causes a response. So what you're going to do is you're going to see a Mystical nice. Dispute here take out the Brazen Borrower, and then Paulo has the opportunity to use Teferi to bounce the Brazen Borrower that's on the battlefield. His Teferi is going to stay at one. Uh -huh. He'll go. be plus a card. And now Nasif has to play on his own main phase, which is not where he wants to be. So this is a great All turn right. for Paulo. Very nice indeed. Finds another Brazen Borrowers. So 
If Nassif can get rid of this Teferi, he can start making merry in the air with the uh, Brazen Borrowers, but you know, he, he is open now. So if you want to do anything, now's the turn. Now's the time to do so, Gab. Omen of the Sea is going to be the play for him. Let's see what he finds off the top of the library. Scries 2 gets to draw. Both going to bottom, so mystery card. Sphinx of Foresight, that's a pretty good one to get. Yeah, Nassif is going to be in some serious trouble now because this isn't really the way that he wants to play the game, but it's the way he's forced to play the yeah. game because Teferi's on the battlefield. Now Paulo gets to kind of dictate the terms of engagement. First of all, he's got a Teferi that's on two. Second of all, he's got a Teferi, and the plus of it means that he gets to play at instant speed. So he gets to, again, dictate the terms of engagement yeah. here in a very meaningful way. Shadow the Sky on your turn. Yeah, the, the, the opponent's turn? But, oh, it just feels so bad. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is exactly what I mean, is that because Paulo gets to kind of dictate everything, yeah. this is exactly where he wants to be. Nassif has to play into him. Mm -hmm. Paulo doesn't have to play into Nassif, and that's not where Nassif wants to be yeah. in this circumstance. What's great next turn is Temple of Enlightenment, possibly clear the battlefield, come back to me, Dream Trawler. Merry Christmas. Yeah, we, we could just easily see Paulo go that route. Yeah. Dovin's Veto is an interesting look here with the Scry, but I don't think he needs that mm -hmm. kind of card in this particular game, given how it's shaping up. I mean, he's got enough counter magic if he does encounter um, Fires of Invention. Temple of Triumph is the draw there for Gab Nassif. Could fire for Kenrith, could potentially try and brazen borrow something. Could Yeah, he's, he's got options. It's going to be interesting to see what the play here is. What do you think is the most you know, likely option for him. Well, I think the Seif is probably going to consider just Brazen Borrow into Teferi mm -hmm. and make Paulo respond in kind. Now, if Paulo elects to cast Shatter of the Sky, that clears up the battlefield and that leaves the window open for Nassif to deploy a Kenrith or a Sphinx of Foresight, that type of thing. But again, that's not the kind of thing that Paulo's really going to panic about because this style of deck is good at handling these type of problems. Yep. Also worth noting that Paulo still gets to play the turn yep. on, at instant speed. So what yep. he can do this turn is that if Nassif plays a spell, like a Kenrith, Mm -hmm. He says, that's fine. Shadow of the Sky, untap Dream Trawler. You probably lose now. <laughs> but Nassif being very, very cautious indeed, not playing into the board wipe. Doesn't get the card here, but Paolo does clear the battlefield. Yeah, he's considering Nassif playing Shadow of the Sky. Card, yep, and I, and, I, and I like this here from Paolo. Going to use your mana for the mm -hmm. turn. Now, remember, Nassif can't respond with Brazen Borrower mm -mm. right now because of the Teferi effect. So he's got nothing he can do except for sacrifice the Omen of the Sky or activate Castle Vantress. And this, again, will allow Paula to untap, draw his card, and potentially deploy Dream Trawler. Curious to see what he opts for here. Looks like we're going to fire off the second Brazen Borrower. OK. So just keeping the threat going in the air, try and whittle away at the life total, but another Shadow of the Sky off the top of the library. So I love this play PBDDR here is looking pretty good right now. I love this play here from Paula because this is basically saying, OK, you got to beat my best card. Yep. At least in this circumstance. Now, now what's great here about from Paulo as well is because he only has one Dream Trawler, but he doesn't need it to win the game. No. He can, of course, get it back with Elspeth, Elspeth Conquers Death if that works itself into the equation, but he just says, beat this. Yeah. And as and you probably know, do you beat this? it's really hard to do. <laughs> it is indeed. I mean, Gab Nassif, unfortunately, doesn't have the same effect with Shadow of the Sky, you know, destroy all creatures. Mm -hmm. He's just going to have to find a way to threaten it, to get it to tap and become hexproof. Kenrith is going to try and do something here, giving everything haste. Well, this, there he comes. Yeah, this, this turn yes. here from Nassif is fine. You know, you're yeah. going to be Kenrith, activate haste, get you down to 10, yeah. play a land, pass the turn back. But when what Paulo gets to do now is he gets to draw a card. Oh. He just drew maybe his best draw step for the turn. Bye, and Elspeth Kenny. conquers death. So Kenny is probably going to bite the dust. Oh, yeah. And you're going to gain some life. So that five that Kenrith just dealt, immediately undone. Yep. That's just the power of Dream Trawler. Every time you draw a card, it just gets bigger. You gain more life. It's an absolute house. And, and what I love for this turn here from Paulo is if he wants to, he can go Birth of Miletus into, into, uh, into, into Elspeth Conqueror's yeah. deck, with, which means that now his deck has stopped being this kind of flash control mm -hmm. deck into I'm a tap out mid-range oh, deck. Oh, he doesn't do it. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a little shocked by that. Wow. Hmm. All right, so he's going to counter whatever he can play and then just take over from there. That's a Ooh, little surprising. Perhaps spaces. perhaps we're looking to get a little bit more with this copy of Shatter the Sky? Mm hmm Huh. Maybe he wants to do it after the next attack to get the card off of it as well. I will say one of my favorite things about watching Paulo play Magic is I always learn something oh, yeah, when I watch too. him play. And, it's okay, a master so, class. So now let me let me unwind a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Why would Paulo make that play? Okay, well, Paulo wants to get as much as he can with the Shatter the Sky. Yeah. That makes some sense to me. So how do you set that up? Okay, well, you say... 
I'll activate Castle Ardenvale, mm -hmm. block your Kenrith. Right? Yep. So now that means your Kenrith is essentially doing nothing. That means you need, to, you need to play another threat to actually get some damage in. So here comes the Sphinx. Now, will Paulo counter this, or will he play into Shadow of the Sky? It looks like he's going to counter the Sphinx, okay? I think if he'd let that through, he'd be very, very dead. So, yeah, let's mitigate well, some I don't, damage. I don't see him as dead in that situation at all, because there's a Dream Trial on the battlefield. The Sphinx would be more of an annoyance true. than anything else. True, true, true. Ah, yes, Kenrith doesn't give the plus one. That's just the Cavalier. So Dream Troller drawing another card or getting the buff from the card drawn. A wall now on the battlefield to just chump block good old Kenny. And uh, Dream Troller doing some work again. Going to take the Seaf down to eight. Yeah, I, I I really like the way that Paulo played that turn. I think it would have been easy to play Elspeth Conqueror's deck in the last turn. Yeah. But what Paulo can continue to do is it looks like he's going to activate Field of Ruin here in just a moment. Actually, he's going to go to Elspeth Conqueror's deck yeah. this time with three mana available for Absorb. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. Fair enough. Nice. So Fair keep, enough. keep up the counter spell just in case there's anything else that, you know, throws a spanner in the works. Okay. And, yeah, Paolo is looking very good indeed. Omen of the Sea. Can it find something to keep Gab in this game? Because it, it looks like it looks like PBDDR is going to run away with this. Yeah, okay. So, ah, oh, boy. I love, <laughs> I, well, the, the reason I'm taking the deep breath here is, is because what, what Paulo did on the last turn is he wanted to make sure he didn't get cheesed out by something yeah. like Cavalier Flame. Which so that's see. why he left up the counter magic. Mm -hmm. And so now on the following turn, he says, okay, now Elspeth conquers death, kill your Kenrith, and then I have absorbed mana. So if you do find a Cavalier Flame, I have an answer, and that is Nassif's draw for the turn. Oh, yeah. So then he absorbs that, and then it's just a complete runaway. And I guess more importantly, he absorbs it if he wants to absorb it. Yeah. Because he doesn't have to. No, not at all. But, I mean, it's a pretty good target for absorb. So he's yeah. going to do just that. Counter target spell. Gains three life. And yeah. there we go. Gab Nassif concedes. Paolo Vitor Domodorosa picks up the very first win. Now go to sideboard. What yeah. do we do against That was That was such a well-played game by yeah, the way. Paolo, excuse excellent. me. Just, just the, the level of patience there with not actually moving so quickly with that Elspeth Conquers deck mm. was actually a very, very smart uh, and intelligent thing to do, which wouldn't surprise you. As far as sideboarding is concerned, he doesn't have to change a lot. Like, you know, the mystical dispute that was effective in the last game, I'm curious to see how many copies he wants in. It looks like he's going to go to the full four because he probably wants to have the ability to counter Teferi in a meaningful way on the draw. Mm -hmm. You can also counter Fire's Invention by hardcasting mystical dispute on the draw against this particular deck. So Birth of Melita's coming out, no surprise there. But he doesn't have to change up all that much to be able to win this matchup. Yeah, it looks pretty good so far. Arkham of Sun's Grace with three copies now. That card is so great. I love Very it. Very powerful. It, it, it allows him to close out the game a little mm -hmm. bit faster, too. Yeah. It looks like he's getting away from his main deck copy of Dream Trawler. Yeah, I saw that come out. Yeah, so it, looks it looks like, like that's he's going, going away. going for Pony Power instead. Yeah, I mean, Arcana Sun's <laughs> Grace, and then he can also still do it with Castle Art and Veil, but ultimately mm -hmm. what he's going to do is what's what we just saw in the last game, which is just kind of grind you, grind you down into submission. Yeah. And then he will be able to win with kind of whatever. <laughs> kind of whatever. Yeah. I wish all magic games were that easy. Wow. I like to win with creatures. Paulo, <laughs> Paulo likes to just kind of get it done at, at his leisure, which I can certainly respect as well. Th this matchup here for Nassif is really, really difficult. Mm. I I'm hoping he gets some better tools. And one of the tools he's going to go to, it looks like his Robber of the Rich yeah. out of his sideboard. Uh, and that's a, kind of a way for Jeskai Fires to put some pressure on the opponent in a meaningful way. We used to see players go to Tithe Taker, Legion War Boss to be able to do that and mm -hmm. force control decks to play and interact more and earlier than they want to. So we'll see if Robber can actually play that role where Legion War Boss used yeah. to do that. We haven't seen Robber steal anything awesome yet, and I would very much like to see that. I, I would too. Uh, the, the upside in the ceiling on Robber of the Rich is, is really, really high, yeah. especially in this matchup. Mm -hmm. So there's some pretty crazy stuff that can happen here from the Sieve. Um, but that card, it can play a huge role in the sideboard of games. Yeah, well, let's see if uh, we can get the game over quickly here if you are Gavin Nassif. I bet he's looking to do that. The longer the control deck goes, or the longer the control game goes, the better it gets for PVD, so yeah, let's N get things underway. Nassif has to continue, or at least attempt, to be the aggressor. His yeah. deck isn't one that is really built to be all that aggressive, but... Oh, look at his hand, though. He's got two robbers. Absolutely. So this can allow him to have an aggressive draw where he goes robber into Teferi. Mm -hmm. And that can be some problems. And he does have Sphinx of Foresight to help smooth out the draw. So I like this opening hand here for Nassif. Yeah, both actually look pretty good. I mean, Paolo has got Mystical Dispute available to him to counter any shenanigans. Absorb Shadow of the Skies. So, yeah, this looks good. Temple of Enlightenment can scry to find something impactful, like the Archon of Sun's Grace, perhaps, or to Fairy. Yeah, both of these hands are good here for, um, for both players, honestly. Yeah. So, see if it's doing uh, the little pregame action with Sphinx's Foresight here, scrying three at the beginning of his first upkeep. And in 
typical Nassif fashion. <laughs> we are deep in the tank. Maybe we should commentate in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we'll keep up with him. Or not, as the case may be. Yeah, but, we, yeah. No, no one's keeping up with Nassif. <laughs> He's playing at his own pace, doing his own thing, and I love to watch it happen. <laughs> he thinks every decision through and then some. Now the... Uh, the rope is going to force him to make a decision, and it yep. looks like he's kept quite a few lands on top. All right, Temple of Triumph, going to get another scry. He knows what's on top. Elspeth Conquers Death is the draw there for PVDDR. Likely see the Temple of Enlightenment first, just to see what the next card is on top of the library. It's interesting. If he wants to go with Temple, if he wants to lead off with a basic island, you can make the argument for island to turn on Mystical Dispute right mm -hmm. away, uh, and that's why Paul is thinking things through, and he'll go to the Temple. Ooh, hello. There's a good pony. Yeah, now the question is, do we want to go to the Archon or not? I, um, I would like to. Yeah. Does, does this work itself into the equation where you have a copy of Shatter the Sky in your hand? I think this is actually something yeah. that's really worth considering. Yeah, it's kind of awkward having a creature that creates creatures every time, you know, constellations triggered and then just blowing everything up. So eh, it's a little bit like, okay. But, you know, if that is the case, then there's no need to Shatter the Sky if you're generating all these creatures that just, like, chump lock things that uh, Nassif could be playing out. So Robert the Rich is going to get a card. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's going to get the Archon. Yeah, it's going to take the Archon right away. But no. you, you know what? It's okay. I have another one. That's an interesting draw step there. So a second Look archon. at my horse. My horse is amazing. <laughs> now, here's, here's a fun little game here. Do you go to Teferi? Do you go to Robert <laughs> the Rich? It's going to go to Robert of the Rich because ah. Hollow is representing mystical dispute, yeah. and Nassif knows that. I like getting the damage in. I think if you can get damage in against Control, you're going to do it. So I, I like this here. You're getting damage in. You're forcing Paulo to interact in a way that he doesn't want to. And now here come robbers, plural, oh, taking some cards. Nice. Oh, goodness. Yeah. To fairy. And what was the other card? Uh, Ether Gust. Ether Gust. Yeah, this is, this <laughs> is really, really nice target. Oh, boy. Steve. Man, these robbers are uh, certainly showing just how good they can be in certain matchups. This one particularly because of how slowly Paulo plays out his hand. Well, it's such a beautiful card from the sideboard when you're on the play yeah. and your opponent is almost certainly going to have more cards in hand than oh, you yeah. so you can steal from them. Now what gets interesting here is what does Nassif want to play on the fourth turn? The first couple of turns were pretty straightforward. A temple, a robber, a robber. Yeah. How do we move forward on this next turn? Do we so, want to deploy anything else or not? Yeah, like my question would be, is it safer to get to ferry out to try and prevent the opportunity for Paolo to counter the things that the robbers are stealing? Or should we just start attempting to play things out of exile? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I, and I think that's an interesting question right now. As Paulo falls down to 10, you see that there's Archon of Sun's Grace, there's Aether Gust over there, Teferi, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. In, in Nassif's hand, he has a copy of Sphinx's Foresight that he can't deploy, but he's also got a Cavalier of Flame that he can on the next turn. So it looks like we're going to go to Teferi from the robber pile. <laughs> the robber pile. It's their loot. The very time arrival on the stack, we can absorb or mystical dispute. One thing that's kind of interesting too is with how Robber of the Rich works, you can pay any mana to play the spell that you steal. Yeah. So what Nasif has done a lovely job of here is paying red, red, and then Temple of Triumph to deploy the Teferi, leaving up Steam Vents to bluff a mystical dispute in this instance, <laughs> which I like quite a bit. Even if he doesn't have it, it's worth making Paulo think about. And Paulo is. Paulo's able to see the ex exiled cards, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. He is. I mean, he is certainly thinking. Oh yeah. I kind of want to counter this because Teferi's really annoying. <laughs> Especially if you're the control player. You don't want other Teferis on the battlefield. You want to be the Teferi player. Speaking of which, hello, Tefers. How are you, friend? Now, this part gets a little bit interesting because it, is this the term where we just shattered the sky? Do we just say clean it up or do we go yeah. to Archon of Sun's Grace? I think blowing things up is better because the more cards he loses, the less he has in his arsenal to defeat the player, the more annoying Nassif can be with playing Palo's cards against him. So. I kind of like blowing things up here and uh, just resetting the battlefield, but, you know, I am not Paolo Vitor Domo de Rosa, so let's see what he decides. It looks like he's going to cast the Shadow of the Sky. He's going to clean things up, so Nassif kind of shake the head, move forward. <laughs> and like, now where do we go? Now that we've dealt with that, now the only problem is he is tapped out, so we don't have another blue source to get the Sphinx down. We can get Cavalier down. Mm -hmm. Right. Or we can get good old Teferi on the battlefield. Yeah, and, and this is an interesting decision here from Nassif. You could certainly make an argument for playing your Sacred Foundry on tap, deploy your Cavalier, and, you know, let's let's throw some cards away and let's get busy here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could certainly understand it, but you could also make the argument, and it looks like Nassif is going back to his control roots a little bit here, saying, let me get <laughs> Teferi down, protect myself against counter magic, mm. and move forward accordingly. So both plays have merits to them. Hard to say if one is more right than the other yeah. in this spot. 
I do like the play of getting to ferry out where there's no risk of having encountered. There's no mystical dispute to worry about. So let's get to ferry down, let's plus him, and let's make it a little bit more difficult for Paolo to interact with the deck. Oh, he minused. Nice. Okay, cool. Let's draw. Let's find some yeah, hands. Yeah, I mean, totally, I like it. Yeah, totally fine with minusing because there's no, nothing yeah, going to kill nothing. the fairy, so you don't have to really worry about yeah. that. Get yourself a new card. Found a Temple of Triumph. Is draw if the fairy was an island, which mm -hmm. turns on the Sphinx of Foresight in hand. And awesome. Bone Crusher's not bad either. All right, now we're going to see some Archon of Sun's Grace, it looks like. Get things going here. Remember, because Teferi's on the battlefield, the copy of Mystical Dispute in Paulo's hand is is a, is a non-starter in this situation. Yeah. Hero thing before. Good old Teferi, shutting off instant speed shenanigans. So the Archon of Sun's Grace is at the mercy of Gab Nassif if he were to have a removal spell of sorts, but just has a Cavalier, a Sphinx, and a Bone Crusher Giant in hand. And it looks like Paulo goes towards the Archon in this situation because he wants to be able to finish off the Teferi mm. and be able to kind of play his instant speed game, though he doesn't really have a ton of instant speed stuff to do in hand at the moment. Yeah. Elspeth Conqueror's death is going to cause some real problems for Nassif this game uh, with the ability to take care of the Cavalier or the Sphinx of Foresight, and that's something that Nassif has to be cognizant of. So Nassif identifying that the Archon of Sun's Grace is most likely going to get rid of Teferi, fires off the Sphinx of Foresight, getting a blocker in the way. Elspeth Conquer's Death, like you mentioned, can take care of it, has a Teferi 2 that could bounce the Sphinx if he wanted to. But I don't know, I kind of like getting rid of this birdie. Because uh, scrying is pretty important for the, the Fire's deck. Yeah, it's not bad. I, I expect the Sphinx of Foresight to not be on the battlefield at the end of the turn. I expect it to either be in Nassif's hand or exiled. Uh, I would be a little bit surprised if it's still on the battlefield at the end of Paulo's turn. And I like using all the mana here and deploying yeah. Elspeth Conqueror's Death. And get rid of the Sphinx for good, clean up the Teferi, move forward accordingly. Yep, and make a pony. Mm -hmm. Aha. So there we go, Constellation Trigger of the Archon of Sun's Grace. Generates a 2-2 two -two with lifelink. It's another good turn here for Paulo. Oh, what we got? Bone Crusher. Oh. Bone Crusher can, bone he crusher wants to can kill, kill the, the pony. Too. Yeah. Oh, shame. Poor little guy. Brief life snuffed out by the Boon Crushing Giant. Mark of Sun's Grace deals with Teferi, so instant speech shenanigans are a go once again until PBD plays one of his Teferi Time Rivers. Wow. Nassif's been holding on to this Cavalier Flame for dear life, trying to find the best spot <laughs> because it's been the best card in his hand for a very, very long time. Yep. So now here it is. Let's go. He can bin two lands. That's nice. Yeah. Usually you don't get to bin anything uh, that you want to. You know, you usually have stuff that you are not keen to put in the bin, but here we go. Let's ditch these two cards and let's draw some more. Just deciding if he wants to get rid of the Sacred Foundry too. Yeah, interesting question here if you're in the seat about how many cards you want to let go. Uh, one or two. Uh, I mean, his hand kind of stinks right now, so he could definitely, <laughs> he could definitely use some help. The, the, the question here is just how much help is he looking for? He's got to get a little bit lucky to, to kind of get back in this game. You can yeah. see the, the texture of Paulo's hand. Oh, Rubber the uh, Rich. That was getting a little Sweet. bit lucky. Actually, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Because he can fire this off and we can start stealing things from Paolo once again. <laughs> And, Very heads up, keep and, there. And people wonder why Nassif's plays take so long. Yeah, because, because he's, he's thinking, damn good. He's thinking <laughs> every little thing through. Mm -hmm. All right, doesn't go for the robber. We're just going to get seven points of damage in. Aloe is down to nine. He has lifelink in the air in the Archon of Sun's Grace. It looks like we're going to see Teferi Time Raveler enter the equation. What's he going to do? Goodbye, Cavalier. Yep. Nice. So he's got enough up for Mystical Dispute if the Cavalier comes down again. Yeah. Very good stuff indeed. This is shaping up nicely here now. Yeah. Five mana. That's a good draw there from Nassif. Mm -hmm. So we've got Robber Potential. We've got Cavalier. So he just drew, so he just drew planes. He can play planes, play Cavalier. Yeah. Um, if that happens, I would not be I would not be surprised. Excuse me to see. Paulo cast Mystical Dispute, yeah. and either he counters it or he taps Nassif out, in which case Nassif cannot give the Cavalier haste. Yeah. And then you play Elspeth Conquer's Death or Teferi to kind of manage it. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're going to go for the Robber of the Rich first. See if there's any reaction or response from Paolo's side of the battlefield. 
little bit inter little bit interesting here because you do have to worry about an instant speed enchantment yeah. during the fray like moment of the sea. I don't think Nasif is going to concern himself with that all that much because it would trade. He still gets to steal the card. Yes, but re also realistically, it, it, I don't think he can really beat Omen of the Sea trading with the um, trading with the robber of the rich right now. Yeah, I, I think he's going to think about you know what happens if this works itself in mm -hmm. if, if this happens. But ultimately, I think he's going to attack. Robber of the rich swinging in. Let's see what it steals off the top of the library. Something good. That's a Narset. Not I mean, bad. that's that's decent. Now, what do you think Paolo is most concerned about? Because he, he can, he's got very many options here. He's got Archon of Sons of Grace. He's got a Narset. What do you think Paolo would use a counter spell on? Well, I want to try to play around Mystical Dispute if I can. Mm. If I'm Nassif here. Yeah. I, I don't think he has the best of ways to do it. So I, I would, if I'm Nassif, of these cards that I want to deploy, I think Archon of Sons of Grace is the one that I really want to resolve the most. Yeah. Because it has the highest ceiling. I just think it's very unlikely that's going to happen. Yeah. So just uh, deciding on what it is he wants to do. Gabriel Nassif versus Paolo Vitor Damo de Rosa. Both these players are fighting for a spot in tomorrow's top eight. The winner will go on to that and have a lovely relaxed start to their morning indeed. Cavalier of Flame is going to be the play and Mystical yeah. Dispute is going to counter it. Interesting play there from Nassif. Oh. Hey, it's a fairy. This is Welcome back. This is starting to get hard. Oh, yeah. So, dueling to fairies. Mm -hmm. Fun times. lose one of them. That's okay. We have another one in hand. No shortness of... Uh, it's no shortage of Teferi. Narset part of Veils is going to join the fray. Good digging for uh, something to deal with the creatures that Nasif has. We've got a Doman's Veto. It's not great, but it uh, prevents a Fires of Invention. Yeah, that one's, its way onto the battlefield. that one's just okay uh, in the Dovin's Veto. And, th and this game is certainly not about Fire's Invention anymore. Countering it, great, if yeah, it yeah. works itself in, in here. However, what, what I like about this is Paulo's starting, starting to, he's not all the way there yet, mm -hmm. but he's starting to take complete control of this game. Having his two life, Planeswalkers will do that too, yeah. Yep, his life total is <laughs> still high enough. Omen of the Sea. Okay, nice. so that's 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 really really yeah, really that's nice. Yeah, really good. Love this turn from Paulo because now he gets to play Dovin's Veto. He gets to play Dovin's Veto and Omen of the Sea in the same turn. Yep, that's awesome. And he gets a uh, he gets a pony off the Constellation Trigger. Mm -hmm. So this, this is the thing that this is the thing that Nasif was thinking about last turn was what happens if Paulo has Omen of the Sea. Yeah. And my Robber the Rich trades with it. Mm -hmm. This is going to come to fruition this turn, almost certainly. And I'll say this: if Paulo wants it to happen. Yeah. I don't know if he will, though, because the robber will be able to attack. He gets to play whatever is in exile, but he can't counter the creature. Well, whatever whatever comes in, whatever comes from exile yeah. is just going to be handled via Elspeth yeah, Conqueror's yeah. death. So it, sure. it's kind of this sequence of events that Paulo can kind of see coming. You attack, I, I open the sea, I make a 2-2, we trade. You play something off your robber the rich, I kill it with Elspeth Conqueror's death and leave up Dovin's veto, mm -hmm. and I still have my planeswalkers on the battlefield, and everything's kind of coming up Paulo in, that, in, in, oh, yeah. in all of those exchanges. And, uh, um, I mean, both these players are great at this because they're both great at playing control strategies. Yeah. But the one thing I'll say about Paulo in this instance is he's able to see how the game is going to go over the course of multiple turns ahead of time. Yeah, he's always playing like three or four steps ahead of yes. himself. And Nassif, that's why his turns take so long, is because he's doing the exact he's same doing thing. The exact same thing, yeah. <laughs> both these players, world-class Hall of Famers, both looking to become world champions here this weekend. Robert the Rich is turning his attention to Teferi, wants to get that off the battlefield. Just deciding if he's committing to this, and there he goes. There you go, another trigger, finds a land off the top. Here comes Omen of the Sea, like you mentioned, Cedric. Here comes a little pony that's going to trade. Aether Gust off the top of the library is the Scry. That's a really good card to find. Oh, yeah. It's it gives him, it gives him options, which is nice. Yeah. Doesn't want it, which is totally oh, fine. Oh, nice. Another, Another omen. Good too. Ooh. Now? Okay. I was curious if he was going to block because he could yeah. turn up the heat. But uh, Paul, this, <laughs> this is obviously what makes Paul much better than me. As Paul was just <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not in a rush to get I this think, game over with. I think you and I are more uh, you know, aligned to the aggressive play styles. Yeah, so we're just he, like, yeah, make more ponies and swing. He, he's, just nope. kinda, he's just kind of keeping it simple. Looks like Dovin's Veto is going to take care of the Narset. Uh -huh. That's fine. Now we get another pony on the side of Gabna Seif. So two Archon of Sun's Grace just staring each other down. 
Yeah, that's going to be taken care of momentarily. Oh, yeah. And this is, I think that this is a pretty difficult matchup here for Jeskai yeah. Fires. I, I think that, at least for the build that Paulo and Andrei Strosky brought here this weekend, they've got all the tools to handle whatever these Jeskai Fires players are doing. Jeskai Fires is not really a deck that plays multiple spells per turn. They're going to play one really big spell per turn <laughs> that you kind of have to deal with, be it a Cavalier or something like that. But when it's one spell per turn territory, which is what Nasif is in, Azorius Control can handle that sort of stuff oh, yeah. just fine. Oh, yeah. Flush with counter spells is PVD's deck. And uh, ways to get your things off the battlefield, i.e. Elspeth conquers death. So we're going to see that deployed. We're going to get a Constellation Trigger. And more importantly, we're going to get rid of Archon of Sun's Grace mm -hmm. and swing in for some damage. In this things spot, are looking good for PV. Yeah, in this spot, PV doesn't have a counter spell ready, but he does have the ability to play Omen of the Sea on mm -hmm. the end step. He has another copy of Elspeth Conquer's Death. And you can see in the right-hand corner of his screen, he's got those permanents that are worth keeping track of into oh, Fairy yeah. and Narset. Oh, yeah. So things are not looking great here for Gab, unfortunately. Omen of the Sea will generate the other 2-2 two -two needed to get the game done and won. And we're going to see Paolo Vitor Damodorosa make it through to the next. He's going to make it through to the top eight. Well, this will be his first top eight ever. So congratulations. His first top eight congratulations, ever? Paulo. Oh, you can't be serious. <laughs> For making your first top eight. I kid, I kid. I've One lost of count. many. Yeah, no I've kidding. lost count. Paulo is just so flipping good at magic. I mean, both of these players, they are incredibly good at this game that we all love. And you just saw a masterclass there. This is the decisions he makes, you know, pausing, not playing something out, keeping up counter spells when it's necessary. He knows when to, you know, just when to deploy and when to counter the threats that need Yeah, I mean, he does a really nice job of picking and choosing and pacing the game. Yeah. And that's something that he can do in that matchup in a very meaningful way. He, again, when you're playing as a control deck, the thing you want to do to try to beat them is you want to make them react when they don't want to. Yeah. When they get to pick and choose, of, I'll counter this or, or let this resolve. I'll answer this when I want to. You're never beating him then. And when playing in Chess Guy Fires, Paulo got to do that over the course of both of those games is he got to pick and choose, yeah. okay, Robber's fine, that card's fine, so on and so forth. And it was honestly a, a pretty easy win as he moves himself yeah. into the top eight. Yeah, clean 2-0, and uh, he's going to move on to the top eight, like you said, but yeah. we still have a few more spots to fill. I believe we got one more after at this. At least but... one more after yeah. this. We also have an elimination match to take a look at, too. So oh, yeah. this particular there's round of still... coverage is actually pretty exciting. Yeah, there's still plenty of magic coming up. We're going to find out who our final people are in the top eight and who our players are that are unfortunately leaving the World Championship but first, let's go hear from PB. Thank you, Alias. I'm here with Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa, who has made it into the top eight, gets to hang out tomorrow morning. What's it feel like? It's great. I'm so happy. So relieved and happy. And it's, you know, just to know that I get to continue playing and this, I still have this opportunity. Because the, the thing that scared me the most when I got here is like, well, what if I just lose immediately and then I'm out and I can't even like compete for the title you know now I feel like I'm still in the competition and and is it looking good because you're going to start in the upper bracket which is always a positive thing now let's talk about the match when you just got against Gabriel Nassif on the Jeskai Guy Fires this is a deck you didn't think you would see right no I thought and most one person would play it and there's four so it's it's a lot more than we predicted is that because you think you have a really good matchup against it? Or what are the reasons to maybe that you didn't think you'd see it? It just wasn't a very popular deck. Like it, we played on Arena a lot and we kept facing the same decks, blue, white, mono, red, reclamation over and over and over. And then, you know, I'd read articles and see what people say and streamers and no one was really talking about it. So we just didn't think it was going to be a big deck. I think it's a good deck. It's not because I think it's bad, but especially good in a field with, with four mono, red players too. So I think it's a good choice. I just wasn't expecting it. Sure, and you also played against Marcio in the later half of today um, against the, the very similar deck. How did that go? I lost, unfortunately, but the games were really close. I think there are slightly differences in, in their versions that make it some aspects of it harder or easier. The games are often super complicated. I think the games are close, and I think they were close versus Marcio and they were close versus Nassif. I just happened to be on the good side of it this time and on the bad side of it against Marcio. Absolutely. Now, of course, you're no stranger to being here on a stage like this with a high-intensity tournament like this. But what's different this time around? It's worth so much more. <laughs> uh, the, the thing is, when you when you play a tournament like a Pro Tour, you're like, yeah, you know, a Pro Tour is a big deal. 
But at the same time, I know I'm going to play another one in three months. So if I go zero and five, yeah, that sucks, but I'm still going to be qualified and there's going to be another one in three months, another one in three months. This tournament, it might be the last time I ever play. Like qualifying for it is very hard. And so, and it happens once a year. So it, it feels like the Olympics, you know, I've been training my whole life for this <laughs> and this is the moment. And if I miss my chance, I don't know when I'll have a chance again. Absolutely, we're, we're all watching you and rooting for you. Congratulations on making it into the top eight. You'll get to hang out and chill. Let's head on back to Cedric and Alias V in the booth. Thank you. Thanks so much, Becca. I like that analogy, that's like the Olympics. <laughs> well, I can't say he's he been is. training, you know, basically his entire life, as you mentioned, because he's yeah. been playing Magic for so long and he's accomplished so much over his time of playing Magic for 15, 16, 17 years. You know, I've been playing Magic for a long time too, and I remember hearing about this random player in Brazil who's starting to put up results uh, slowly but surely, and I was, was playing in Pro Tours and playing all these other things, and now it's a trophy here, a trophy there, a trophy everywhere, uh, to the point where when you see Paulo in the top eight, it's like, well, yeah, but who are the other seven? Yeah, yeah. Because oh. of course Paulo's in the top eight. Of course. Eight. The but the one thing he hasn't done, <laughs> World this. champion. He's never been the world champion, and I talked to him yesterday. He said he gets, he still gets nervous for all the tournaments, but he's especially nervous for this one, as he just conveyed to Becca. He's already into the kind of the tougher part in the top eight. I can't wait to watch more of him over the course of this weekend. I can't wait either, but we're going to have to wait to see more of PVD. When we come back from this break, we're going to check out more from Seth Manfield versus Autumn Burchett. So don't go anywhere. Hall of Famer, Raphael Levy. 768 career pro points. Which is the most, by the way. I'm Raphael Levy, and I'm from France. I've been playing Magic since uh, 1994. The game itself is really good. It keeps evolving. There's always new things to learn. You never get bored. I've seen the game evolve. I've seen the world evolve through the game. I haven't put that many very big results throughout my careers, but my thing is consistency. I've consistently done well over the 22, 23 years I've been playing uh, on the Pro Tour. To be the next world champion would be the pinnacle of my career. I don't think I'm nervous, I'm just excited. I've known most of the players at Worlds for, uh, for quite a bit, but I don't have any rivalry. I don't have anybody I'm especially uh, afraid of. So, uh, yeah, I've been around for a long time. They should be afraid of me. I shouldn't be afraid of them. Je suis Raphael Levy et je serai le prochain champion du monde. Considered one of the greatest players of all time, 10 years ago, won the Pro Tour from France. Gabriel Nassif. This season has been kind of crazy for me. I qualified for Worlds kind of out of nowhere. I'm excited. I've never played in the kind of modern form of Worlds, the one where it's like 16 players, 24 players. I've never competed in that kind of Worlds. I'm really excited. I'm, I'm also really nervous. I think I'm just nervous because I'm not sure I'll have another shot at Worlds, you know. I, there's a lot of good players out there and it, it's it's really tough to make it there. I think once once I'm sitting down and playing the game, it's all the same. I just focus on what I can control. You know, as long as I'm happy with the way I prepared and just play my best, I, I don't feel like I have anything to prove really, you know. I don't think I'm one of the best players in the field, you know, probably somewhere in the middle. It'd be kind of unexpected and amazing if I win, but yeah, if I can have a trophy uh, on my way home, that'd be nice. Je suis Gabriel et je serai le prochain champion du monde. Welcome back to Magic World Championship 26, powered by Alienware. I'm Alias, this is Cedric, and we've got some more action here in the final round of the day. We're going to have a look at Seth Manfield versus Autumn Burchett, both playing for their spot in the top eight. 
going to be a good one. Should be good. Seth playing Model Red, Autumn with a little Teamer Reclamation, and I'm excited to watch it unfold. Seth felt very confident about his Model Red deck coming into the weekend and felt this is one of the better matchups. So curious to see how this one unfolds for him, see if he got his prediction right about how the matchup does go. Well, let's jump straight in. Let's see how the players are doing so far as we join them in the match. It's already underway. No, it's, we're joining it from the beginning. No. Seth Manfield is up a game, so let's get underway and see what the opening hands look like. All right, so pretty good opening, not a pretty good opening hand there, I should say. Steamkin times three. Ooh, is that worth keeping? Not your favorite, especially when you're on the draw. Um, could certainly rationalize keeping this hand and putting either a Steamkin or a Mountain to the bottom. Um, it, it it does have what I would consider to be high upside if things do break yeah. in a certain way. So if Seth kept this hand, I wouldn't be terribly surprised. But if he sent it back, I wouldn't be that surprised either. I kind of like it. I want to see three Steamkins going absolutely nuts. <laughs> So we're going to see just that one Steamkin is going to go to the back. Keeps the three lands, two Steamkins, and a light up the stage on the other side of the battlefield. We've got some ramp there, and we've got some interaction in the Ether Gust and the Brazen Borrower's Petty Theft. So Autumn can keep things under control as this match progresses. Just try and protect the life total and get to doing the things that the deck wants to do. Now, Autumn has a little bit of interaction here with Ether Gust, Brazen Borrower, Grow Spiral for Acceleration. Uh, that's a really, really, really nice draw from Seth. Now, I've never been all that excited about drawing a yeah, Scorch Spitter. it's a Scorch my, Spitter. It's as, so cool. As my first draw <laughs> step. But it's important for him to be able to just curve out one, two, and potentially three with yeah. Light of Destruction. Oh. Now, a guaranteed oh. three in Annex. Oh, man. That's just... I mean, magic is easy, right? You just draw what you need. Well, for Seth, sometimes it is. That's oh, for yeah. sure. Former world champion and all. I do, I do love how, how both players are wearing, they're, they're rocking the hat game. Yeah, hat game strong. Hat game is strong, yeah. Growth Spiral in response to the runaway Steamkin gets another land down on the battlefield for Autumn. Good start here for both players. Oh, Storm's Wrath Storm's is, Wrath. is pretty nice as well. But yeah. we have seen this problem before for our team of Reclamation players, a lack of a fourth yeah. land. Where is the land at? Now, is there interaction? Yeah, there's Petty Theft, there's Scorching Dragonfire, there's Aether Gust. Is there something to play towards over the course of a mid-game and long game? Yes, there's Hydroid Crisis. The thing that is missing is land. Anax hardened in the forge now joins the fray. It's going to make that Storm's Wrath not so great if it does land, because uh, like we've seen, we get the... Uh, we will get the little sages off there, but Scorching Dragonfire will take care of it, exiling it, so no death trigger at all. Yep. Unfortunately for Seth, but things are still looking pretty good for him. He's got some great cards in hand and no land yet again. And here we go again. A Gross Spiral was the draw. Tough times for our team of Reclamation players against Red Decks in particular, having such difficulty finding mana number four to be able to cast Storm's Wrath. It's very, very good in this matchup if you can actually cast <laughs> it. It is. It's very, very good indeed. But unfortunately, Autumn hasn't found land number four. And if they don't find it soon, things are going to be... Very, very painful for them indeed. Yeah, I'm curious if Seth is going to deploy this Fervent Champion or try to set up a light at this stage. That's the only thing that's a little bit curious here for me this turn. Autumn looks like they're going to respond in a meaningful way with either Aether Gust or Brazen Ooh. Borrower. I should say the Petty Theft half of Brazen Borrower. Hmm. I'm wondering if the Brazen Borrower shouldn't have come into play there because now the Runaway Steam can... can empty itself. Oh, no, there's still there's still time to respond. Still time to respond? Yeah, there's still time to respond here. This one's on the stack, on so the once stacks. it has three counters, then you, then it can there remove it and go. dump the red mana in. So this is where Autumn has to make the decision. Not going to interact. So, all right, the game plan here is pretty clear, which right. is Grow Spiral, try to spike the land, Storm's Wrath, clean up the battlefield. Cool, now at the stage. Not going to be effective here, I don't think. Yeah, they, they've five points of damage. Oof. Autumn, Autumn has very clearly made their decision on how they need yeah. to try to go about winning this game. Yeah. So very tense times here indeed. This growth spiral needs to land. Has to find land number four for Autumn mm -hmm. Burchett. Just two looks at it. The reveals there aren't that scary in a mountain and a robber of the rich. Yeah, that's all right. But here comes another light. Let's stage. do another light up stage. Yep. The Steamkin's doing Steamkin things. We're going to be able to just play everything out now if uh, Seth wants to. Probably doesn't, though, because of Storm's Wrath being a factor. Ooh, nice. Bone Crusher Giant and Rimrock Knight are the draws there. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much all on this growth spiral in Autumn's hand now. Can they find land number four? Tense times for Mythic Championship winner number one. Yeah, I think even if... Even if the land is found, I still think Autumn is 
going to lose the game because of the leftovers that are left from light up the stage. Yeah. But Rubber the Rich, Rimrock Knight. Yep. Kind of hurts, Bone Crusher Giants. Yeah, all, all that stuff is going to cause a real headache. Oh, Wilderness Reclamation off the top and a breeding pool that hurts. Ooh, it's land. Yep, and I think. I, I think, mean, it's something. Yeah, Autumn, oh. Autumn is, is smart enough to know. Uh, your Mythic Championship one winner, the Storm's Wrath, will clean up these creatures, yes, but now you get to stomp oh. the end step <laughs> uh, and then clean up the game oh, with my the Robber goodness. of the Rich and the Boulder Rush from Rimrock Knight. Mm -hmm. So Steamkin being MVP in this mm -hmm. matchup. One life, Autumn is on. Robber of the Rich is going to clean it up. Let's uh, get in there, swing in for the last two points of damage, and congratulations to Seth Manfield who locks up his spot in the top eight. Mono Red, he Mono felt Red. confident bringing it here this weekend. Of course, there were a lot of options, Team of Reclamation, Jun Sacrifice, Azorius Control, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Mountains, let's do yeah. mountains. Yeah, mountains, Seth dude, is doing it well. go. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, very, very convincing victory there for Seth Manfield. I think he's going to be quite happy with the deck that he bought, so. Yeah, I mean, top eight now. Yeah. Um, Seth, and, and we talked about it right at the top, I know the, uh, the analyst outside, uh, Maria, Sean, and Brian talked about how Seth Manfield, in a weird way, is kind of underrated coming into this weekend and a uh, just a little under the radar, but all the players in this room respect just how good Seth is at the game of Magic. Oh, yeah. He is a former world champion. He's a Magic Hall of Famer, a Pro Tour champion. If there's something to have been done, He's he done has it. done it, including winning this tournament before. This is the hardest world championship probably of all time and certainly the most on the line, and he's already into the topic with a deck that he is very confident in. Oh, yeah. Very confident with, very comfortable with as well. So it's going to be interesting to see just how well Mono Red does on day two and day three. Right now, we are going into Severin versus Strasky. So let's jump into the game right as it's happening. It's been a grind. So let's jump into the end of this matchup and see just how our two players are doing. Awesome thing, too. Elimination match. Elimination match, yeah. yes. Elimination match. Here it is. Both of these players are live. This has been an absolute slugfest. Keep an eye on their timers. They're going to be keeping an eye on them too. Torel Severin, Andre Strasky, both Mythic Championship winners. Teferi telling us, don't worry, I've got this. Let's see if he does. Now, you mentioned the time being a factor, and you are absolutely right Ooh, about boy. that. You see for six and eight minutes you left. You see for Severin, he's got about eight and a half minutes left for Strasky. We're underneath six. Now, one thing I will note. That's a big bird. Is that Strosky, who's attacking <laughs> now with a Dream Trawler and a couple of tokens, Strosky's deck is built to beat the Mirror. Yep. In a very, very meaningful way. Three copies of Castle Ardenvale, vale, only one Dream Trawler, a ton of counter spells that are main deck already, all that good stuff. He and Paulo Vitor Damodorosa playing the same Azorius Control deck, and then Tarl Zevran is the other Azorius Control deck in the tournament. Yep. But the notable difference being notable difference being that he's playing more copies of Dream Trawler, yes. expecting more aggressive strategies. Yes. So now the big question is, will Andre, who looks like he's gonna win game two mm -hmm. pretty comfortably, is he gonna have enough time to win game number three? Yeah, he's got five minutes to do it. And I don't know about you, but uh Azorius control games do not go very fast. They do not go very fast no. at all. So it makes you wonder what happened in that first game between these two yeah. because Strosky built marathon. his yeah Strosky built his deck to be able to win the mirror, especially in game one with those additional counter spells and less copies of Dream Trawler and less copies of Birth of Miletus. So Taroff was able to win game one. Looks like Strosky's pretty favored here in game number two, though it looks like Zevran is considering countering this Narset and leaning on emergency powers to maybe get him back in this game. All right, Cedric, I haven't seen that card played ever what emergency powers <laughs> well, we're gonna, do if it becomes relevant we're gonna draw a bunch of cards <laughs> that's for sure uh, right. and then the fun will unfold from there so i'm mm. I, I, we'll we'll get excited about it if it actually gets cast which would be awesome by the way yeah well they're not drawing any cards now because uh no said potter avails is on the battlefield mm -hmm. and she likes to shuttle for any card draw castle vantress is going to get a scry in for tor elf he needs to find something to deal with this big birdie and its two friends it's on three life at the moment, and Strasky's on 47. I just looked at the life total. Yeah, Dream Trawler. <laughs> Dream Trawler's been getting busy this game, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay, so scrying for Torelf. He's got, a, he's got a little bit of a buffer against the clock for Strasky. He's got two minutes on him, so he can take his time here. <laughs> but you're going to see a bit more uh, a fervent pace from, uh, from Strasky, I'm sure. Now, for emergency powers, as it looks like, we're going to do a little bounce in here. Mm-hmm. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards, exile emergency powers. It's not looking very good for Torelf here. I think I think we're going to see a Strasky victory. Because no card draw off of uh, Teferi. He got rid of one attacker, but... 
Beyond that, we're just going to generate a bunch of little 1-1s one and swing in for the win here. Strasky has to has to do something. Oof. Well, Strasky's going to win this game. I think well, he's, he, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to win this game. So, so what is... Uh, Next what is, game is what I'm what, what's, about. what's a little bit interesting uh, from Toroff that I, that I kind of like, and good no attack there from the Dream Trawler, by mm -hmm. the way, uh, because he doesn't want to deck himself. I think that's no. like, start, <laughs> starting to become... Oh, yeah, he doesn't bit. have any cards left. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't know how many cards he has left because the sleeves, <laughs> the sleeves are a little... It's a little hard to tell if those are sleeves. No, those are not sleeves. That is the arena. He is out of cards. Okay. Ooh, boy. All right, so emergency powers. Each shuffle. What? Each player. Well, if he, has, if, he has no, if he has no cards. Oh, he's countering his own spell. <gasps> oh, just keep What a heads up play. I okay. love that. I love that. All right, so Torf is still in it. He could win this. Strasky is, is pulling Strasky off. Is dead? Yeah, he's dead. He, he, he cannot oh pull another my card. Gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my Torf. gosh. 